Allen out of the gun. Here comes Samuel in motion to the far side. He spins into the backfield. Allen drops back to pass, throws left, has Cook wide open. Inside the 15, sideline to the 10, to the 5, touchdown, Bills! Mac Collins in motion, they hand it off to Cook. Cook bursts right through the middle, cuts to his right, inside the 35-30, 25-20, along the sidelines to the 5, high steps and then hurdles into the end zone! He flipped right into the end zone, 49-yard run, it's his third touchdown of the Knights. Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. Happy Friday. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Happy Hour. That sound you heard at the top was James Cook running wild, scoring a lot of touchdowns on Thursday Night Football. To be clear, a lot of touchdowns against Jay Croucher. I think this is the important thing. I think you just buried the headline right there. A lot. <clears throat> Jay Croucher is playing our show researcher, Big Show. And uh, and Big Show, just after getting a beatdown from me, Big Show was like, I'm not taking it anymore. No, he had enough. He, he's like, listen, Jay Croucher, take this from James Cook. And so it was just a beautiful thing. Every time you saw James Cook going to the end zone, Jay Croucher just died a little bit more. It was awesome to see, really. Yes. Well, the worst thing is I didn't check who I was going up against, so I just found out 20 minutes <laughs> yes, ago. I got he absolutely in. slaughtered. We told him we um, walked in. No, he slapped me like a grape. Yes, he worked he did. me like a speed bag grape, <laughs> yeah. uh, Big Show did. But. The beautiful thing is, Matthew, it's Friday morning. There's yeah. still time to get it back. And also, as I was talking about, three touchdowns, you'd expect like 35, 40 points. It's got 28 points. Yeah. That's bad for me, but it's manageable. We can get it back. You can. You won't, but you, in theory, <laughs> you in dog. theory it's could. It's mathematically I'm, possible. I'm, I'm predicting a big show victory this week as well. Second career multi-touchdown game for James Cook. Um, his second rushing touchdown on only 30 attempts. To me, the exciting. there were a couple exciting things about this, obviously, than just overall the overall production of James Cook is that one of the touchdowns came on a goal to go rushing attempt. I, an attempt that I think, and normally, here's the first touchdown, the, the, just the pass, just a beautifully uh, uh, designed screen here. Here's the second touchdown, just boom. They're like on the three yard line and just, what do you know? Just normal, yeah. right up the gut. They didn't try to do anything cute with, uh, with Josh Allen. And then here, you're watching the third touchdown, just the explosiveness of James Cook. Don't do stuff like that, James Cook. We, we <laughs> don't get hurt diving into the end zone and flipping over, but you see the numbers there. Just a 78 total rushing yards on just 11 attempts. The one reception that resulted in a touchdown, ultimately 28 and a half fantasy points against Jake Croucher and everyone else that faced him. Since Joe Brady took over in week 11 of last season, He's been the ninth best running back in fantasy. This is one of the reasons why he was on the preseason love list. It's one of the reasons why he's been on the love list. Great game from James Cook. We'll talk about the implications to my guy, Josh Allen, but I think this is a fantastic game for James Cook. Yeah, it's one of the reasons free. why he drinks free. He drinks free. Uh, monster game for, again, big show against Jay and everyone uh, that has him. I have him in a number of leagues. Thank you very much. Is it, Cook. is it a little, I don't know if concerning is the right word, but like the other guys got work in the running game, like Ray Davis. I mean, it looks a little deceiving because he got nine carries to James Cook's 11. Five of those carries were when the game was done. But right. do you think James Cook is going to be like full-blown workload, 85% 80, 80, of the carries? I think, I mean, catches the ball, which is the yeah. most important yeah. aspect. So I think so. This was a game where in the whole second half, Matthew, they didn't really need anything from anyone. That, that's yeah. the point. Like Josh Allen didn't have to, if you had Josh Allen in fantasy, you got burned by the blowout. Oh. Uh, our bets I, got burned oh, by that. Thousand percent. Like they didn't I, need to do one, anything. One of our, one of our bets was, uh, uh, and we actually talked before the show. Where I was just like, yeah, I really like the Bills plus two and a half and the <laughs> Bills money line. It was crazy that the Bills were getting points. And then, but uh, but the the bet I gave out yesterday on the show was Josh Allen over one and a half passing touchdowns in the twelve previous previous games against the Dolphins. He had thrown multiple touchdown passes in all twelve of them. And I think what I said on yesterday's show is like, watch now, I'm going to jinx him. Hmm. First first drive touchdown pass to James Cooks. So I'm like. I got this. I'm winning this by the end of the first quarter. Right. And there you go. That's why they call it gambling. Yeah. That's why they call it betting. Well, we, um, we talked and, about how yeah. terrifying one of the public's favorite bets last night on DraftKings was Tyreek Hill under 59 and a half receiving yards at plus 450. You got 24. You didn't he even cashed. get halfway yeah. to that. Yeah. Yeah. Massive win for the yeah. public. Massive win for the public. We'll talk about the Dolphins offense uh, overall, but that was bizarre to I, see Tyreek just three for 24. I, If I was drafting again today, um, Josh Allen is still my number one quarterback. Bad day at the office just because, again, they blew him out. And, you know, obviously, you know, the Dolphins just didn't do much on offense. The three interceptions by Tua, obviously that's tough. Um, 
Uh, but you know what? I'm not worried about it. It just they just didn't need to. And I, and I do think that they want to be more balanced on offense. And I think to me the biggest takeaway from James Cook isn't that he's going to be a workhorse back in the way that you know Isaiah Pacheco or Jonathan Taylor may be. I think because of his frame, yeah. they'll still use. They're still going to use Josh Allen in the running game. They're still going to use some some Ray Davis and you know some Ty Johnson. I think ultimately. But to me, the exciting thing is the biggest knock on James Cook prior to the year was like, this is a guy that's just never getting work near the goal line. He's too small of a running back. They've got Josh Allen. You know, they're going to, in theory, have Ray Davis in the Damian Harris role or the Latavius Murray role that we've seen in previous seasons where they've just a bigger back that they use when they get in close. But the fact that James Cook now has four touchdowns in two games, he's going to score touchdowns this year. And given his role in that offense, his pass catching ability, his three down ability, like you have a top 10 fantasy running back that you didn't that it didn't cost you that on draft day. Let's get over to the Dolphins side of this game, guys. And we have a jam-packed show today. We're going to get through all the injuries you need to know going into the weekend. Denny Be Carter is going to join us in a bit. Before we get to the, the Dolphins, the last thing I just want to say on this is that the rest of the passing, you know, Keon Coleman does nothing. Like, yeah. he got a little something out of Khalil Shakir. Yeah, Another bad threw. game for Dalton Kincaid. To me, my again, my own takeaway is that that was just all a result of game flow, and games are not going to typically be like that. I, I still think, other than Dalton Kincaid, it's going to be tough to trust a Bills pass catcher week in, week out. And I know we haven't seen it from Kincaid yet through two weeks, but I feel like at least I understand his role in the offense. The rest, I think, is just going to be sort of like on a week-to-week -week basis, matchup-based, and it's going to be hard to trust any one of them until we see somebody sort of consistently emerge. But better days are ahead for the Bills passing offense, and specifically Josh Allen and Dalton Kincaid. They just didn't need to. Yep. So just I just want to say that. On that, for anyone worried about the Bills pass catchers, just look at Buffalo's schedule the rest of the season. It's insane. It's like they play the Niners every week. Even just like, it, now it's Jacksonville at Baltimore, at Houston, at the Jets. Like, it's just going to be hard all year and they're just going to have to be games where it's the Josh Allen show and he's dropping back and he's throwing 35, 40 times. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and Rotorworld.com, and I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched, or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay, I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own Fantasy Football Happy Hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.